systems, as I said, race, go from subway to the street skate, from a park to a bus stop. Um, the information needs to be applicable across different modes of travel. And including things like the uh, Dixie bike hire scheme, for example, which provides a great opportunity to provide consistent information and mapping for, bike, for cyclists as well as for pedestrians. And being local came across really strongly in all of the work that we've done. That what we're not looking to do is to import a standard solution from somewhere else in Toronto. The proposals that we've developed are driven by the interests of all the stakeholders and recognize the history, the context, the background, and the future of Toronto. I'm afraid the information on here is a little bit small. It's on the board, so you can see in a bit more detail after the presentation, but three key components of the slide, an information hierarchy, and that looks at um, city-wide, through areas, corridors, Toronto, because of the length of many of the streets in Toronto, has very, very strong, distinctive corridors. That can be very helpful, but it can also be quite confusing. Knowing where you are in the corridor is, um, is very important. But consistency of naming along a corridor is very valuable. It gives you a very clear idea of where you are vertically in the city, particularly with, for example, the front, um, King, Queens, and so forth. You already understand where you are in relation to the rest of the city and the waterfront. Neighbourhoods, main streets, and places of interest. And it's, it's fundamental for wayfinding system that these, this hierarchy is understood and that the information that is built into a database that tells people what things are called and when to call them these things follows this hierarchy. Because then you know what's put on the sign. And the examples uh, scattered around the room um, show how that could be expressed on Signs. And these are very much conceptual examples where you may have a, a, an area shown in bold type and you might have a point of interest shown in a slightly different colour underneath in a lighter typeface. The, the places of interest aren't flat either, but we are proposing that we have four tiers of places of interest and they range from city-wide landmarks like the CN Tower um, through to the retail that is offered within a BIA for example. The information you want to need changes depending on where you are. If you're uh, out in Scarborough, you don't need to know if there's a, a lush on, um, on Queen Street West so you can get your cosmetics or your, or your soap. What you want to know is where Queen Street West is or, wh or, or which part of the city that's in. So the information that you might present might say, oh, thank you, um, might say um, Queen Spadina for example, and that will get you there. When you get to that area, then you might want to have a retail index that tells you where to find that shop. So a hierarchy of place of interest is fundamental. Um, understanding the connections between places, um, the, sorry, the, con the conventions that are used, how to display distances. So for example, the signs will show walk distances. People frequently underestimate how far it is, overestimate how far it is to walk. So one of the important components of any wayfinding system, and particularly on the maps, is to show people walk distances. That reassures them of how long it will take them to get somewhere, but it also gives them the confidence to make that decision. But we will use pictograms selectively to aid interpretation. Um, but when we have on-street signs, the proposal is to use heads-up mapping, which means that the maps face the direction you're looking in. If you've been into the PATH network, I'm sure you've seen some of the maps in the PATH network, and those maps will be on a wall at the side. And they, sometimes they're rotated to give you the general direction of movement, which you might say south, but you're looking at it when you're actually looking against the, against the movement. So the meaning of heads up mapping is that what you'll see in front of you on the map is actually what you see in front of you when you stand to the side of that map on street. And that makes it much easier for people who find it difficult to read maps to navigate. Printed maps can be traditionally marked up. People rotate them with their hands. Normally, so you can look at them. Um, and the colour coding, which is currently used to denote BIAs or in the PATH network uh, cardinal points, but the colour coding will signify um, information as opposed to promoting districts and areas. So, what they're looking at is a, a flat promotion of the whole of Toronto, but the places of interest and the different hierarchies and levels will be communicated through colour. 
and that there will be positioning guidelines so that people can, people can anticipate when they'll find a sign. Where's the next sign going to be? Well, I knew there was one here. I'm walking along this street. Before someone starts to feel lost, they'll be, they'll be um, comforted by finding a new sign that will support them and confirm that they are moving in the right direction. And, fun, and, and importantly, um, that these signs and the replacement principles will not obstruct the footways. There's a range of different sign types proposed to accommodate the differing um, footway <coughs> widths in Toronto and um, to anticipate the differing needs of people in different, at different times and in different places. Um, the objective of this project is to help people move, not to um, obstruct them from moving. <clears throat> Inclusivity. The, the positioning of the, the signs will be located so that people who are standing or in wheelchairs can access them. Um, and that all the information that's essential can be will be located between 90 and 100, 107, 140 centimetres from ground level. International best practice. So that people of all heights and abilities can get that core fundamental information. Other information can be placed beyond that, but anything that's that's essential needs to be within that fairly tight window. And one of the problems I've found certainly with, with many of the sign systems in Toronto is that there might be a railing between me and the sign, and I can't even get to it to read it properly. So making sure they're positioned so that people can actually get up to them, and if there's patches of information or braille, that people can touch those signs and understand what's, uh, what's on them. Accessibility also considers um, materials such as tactiles, as I mentioned, um, and thinking about information for non-English speakers, and particularly that's the use of symbology, but it's also the use of things like mobile um, new media technologies, which um, don't restrict information. And thinking about the use of 3D images and pictograms on some of the maps, for example, to identify key landmarks. That there's sufficient contrast, both of material, product, and information, so that people can both see them and read them. And that the technologies, um, uh, as we've talked about already, uh, consider the use of accessibility features, particularly on mobile apps, the use of QR codes and other such um, uh, innovations. And there's a very, a very good, broad, strong appetite in Toronto to get involved in this project and third parties to develop third party applications. <coughs> uh, sustainability is about reducing clutter. As you walk around the streets, there's so much legacy infrastructure that is, ha hasn't been touched for many years. This, the, the sign on the left and the top of the picture here is at the top of St. Lawrence Market. I don't know when that was installed or when it was last maintained, um, but it certainly wasn't in the last 10 to 15 years. Um, it's important that as part of implementation of a new system, we get rid of a lot of this clutter, a lot of this legacy that just makes life more difficult. And it, it, that will make the, the, the streetscape of the city more enjoyable for everybody. Um, extendability, we've spoken about making sure that it's future-proof and also it can work for third-party systems. So the information and principles in this could be adopted by, the, by, by um, other wayfinding system owners. Um, it, could be, it could be adopted by PIAs. It could be adopted by the Pan Am Games, for example. It's flexible um, and it can change, um, and it's future proof in that the products themselves are low maintenance and easy to update because there will be accidents, there will be graffiti, there will be damage. But you need to design these products in such a way as to make them modular um, and adaptable. <clears throat> We've spoken about transitions briefly. This slide shows four key themes of transition so, multimodal, but it does integrate with TTC with the subway, with buses, with cars at parking, uh, parking lots. Um, the urban realm interventions improve the legibility of routes, which makes them easier to navigate and, and more enjoyable to navigate. So we ensure that the lighting is good so you can see your way and you feel safe. We can ensure that the um, paving on the sidewalks is not isn't, isn't even um, and provides a comfortable walk. Reciprocity. The information shared, and the part of this project will, will ultimately develop a database of information that can be used by other people. Um, and the, as we said, I've said a couple of times, filling the gaps that we look to make Toronto 
more broadly accessible and more broadly understood. So you've got a mental map of the whole city, not just of little bits of the city, and you understand how they connect. And then in terms of presentation um, on the, of the information, that would include, um, under being local, landmarks to celebrate and promote those key um, destinations in Toronto. Um, the historic names are understood and used, but the, the, the um, system of names that we agree is part of the system, can, of the, part of the strategy, can be adopted by, by other users and used on uh, street flags and maps and any other products. The local character is enhanced and promoted, so we're not trying to create a homogenous, flat, bland Toronto. This is meant to promote the vitality of Toronto and encourage people to explore it and find those places that might be more difficult to locate, um, but to help those places retain their identity at the same time. <clears throat> um, and the place-making interventions, such as public art, um, walking trails and poetry, any of these other kinds of things that make the city more enjoyable for people, because cities are um, a voyage of discovery, and the more you can do to, to enhance that discovery for visitors, for example, by creating historical trails, um, just makes it a more welcoming and enjoyable place. <clears throat> the, this, this slide shows a range of the product family from the uh, Gateway Totems, which should be at the main welcome point areas, uh, areas in, the, in the city. So outside Union Station, for example, you expect to find a totem, an information point that tells you what there is around, around the station and how to get there. Context totems um, that might be in um, uh, local centres, Scarborough, Scarborough Town Centre, for example, by the university in the military, military trail. Um, narrow map totems that accommodate similar information that can be placed on street sidewalks that maybe aren't quite as wide um, and so therefore avoid cluttering and avoid obstructing people's movement. We're also looking at how we can maximise the benefits of existing infrastructure such as the political pillars and how they could be used to provide, for example, uh, retail directories and BIAs that would provide very specific localised information to enhance the system. Um, reinforcing and confirming people's movements through directional signage or flags, and they could be both freestanding objects, but they might also be part of um, a, a joint to lamp columns or other, other, other supports to avoid clutter and additional infrastructure. Um, we need to be careful with that because those lamp columns here that I've noticed are fairly overloaded already, um, both with streetcar wires as well as multiple road signing and all sorts of other things. So, a little bit of um, a little bit of housekeeping on those on those products would be useful in the first place before we put more things onto them. And interpretive signs that you would have outside historical historical places that tell you a bit of background about that about that uh, destination, enhancing people's experience and, and knowledge and understanding. Digital mobile apps. So as I said, we'll be providing the data that supports the delivery of these. Um, local area maps that may be included, for example, within TTC stations in the future. Um, that might be included within retail developments or buildings or um, sports centres or, or cultural venues. Pocket maps are very, very popular and people love having a pocket map. It just helps them move around. Uh, and they like having it with them because it gives them confidence. From previous projects, we found that pocket maps are one of the most popular things that people want. And you can hardly print enough of them with pocket maps. But it also relates to traffic signs and making sure the information on highways is both consistent in terms of what it's saying, but also in its placement, so that from the first point, from the first mention of a destination, I remember driving to the zoo when I first came here, um, not because I love zoos, but uh, I just thought I'd have a little explore and see how I could find my way. And we drove from downtown Toronto to the zoo, and the signing was intermittent. Sometimes I'd see a zoo sign, and then sometimes I wouldn't. And when we came off, when we came off the expressway, and then we got onto the local roads, we drove past the turnoff to get to the zoo twice. And I had to get my phone out with Google Maps to find out where we were, to find out how to get to that zoo. So, unfortunately, the information was there, which encouraged us, myself, and my colleague, to think we could find it, but we couldn't. 